Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have for you the unboxing and initial setup of the Note 8. This is the T-Mobile variant in black as well as the new 2017 Gear VR with remote control. We're going to check them out, see what's new and see what you're getting when you get these two guys as a combination. This is TK, let's check them out. Here are the two boxes. We're going to go ahead and check out the Note 8 first and then we'll check out the Gear VR. Again, this is the 2017 Gear VR with remote control. Uh, the box is pretty simple. We have Note 8, Galaxy Note 8, 64 gigs of the internal storage. And here we are, the Note 8 finally in the hand. Uh, the device looks very nice. I did pick up the black colors I mentioned to you guys. I'm actually a pretty big fan of that. And here we are in its glory. Uh, so a quick hardware tour, what we have here is the volume rocker, the Bixby button is still present on the left, power button is on the right side. Uh, on the top we have the SIM ejector tool for the SIM card tray as well as the micro SD card option. On the bottom we have the 3.5mm headphone jack still present, one of the antenna bands, two of them actually. We have the S Pen, so push that in, pull it out, and very easy, very nice, and actually very nice. It's flush to the actual structure, so it doesn't actually protrude. Single fire and speaker, USB Type-C, Quick Charge 2.0 compatible, of course, as I mentioned, the 3.5mm headphone jack. Um, on the front, we have a 6.3 inch uh, Quad HD display. And just for size comparison, here is the S8 Plus. It's uh, basically a 6 to 6.3. It's a very, very small difference in size. If you're used to the S8 Plus and you're comfortable with it, this should not be an issue at all. Uh, of course, the other big difference that we have on the back is here now we have two sensors in the back as opposed to the one on the S8 Plus. Uh, main difference essentially is that we have one that's a cropped sensor and one that's actually a standard sensor. So what you're doing is you're getting the two times optical zoom as opposed to just, you know, normally what you're getting with the standard lens. Uh, the fingerprint sensor stayed on the right side, although the uh, dual tone LED flash and the heart rate sensor moved to the right from the left here. So essentially, you're still going to be reaching over to put it in. Now for me, again, I'm holding this in the hand. I am able to reach the fingerprint sensor. It's not that hard for me. Power button, big speed button, volume button. All of those look very, very nice. You can notice right there, uh, the wider end, this is more cornered. So it feels a little bit more like it has sharper edges. It's not sharp, there's no sharp edge at all. And it's the same thing on the bottom of the device. They hold very nice, it has a very good grip. You can still actually twist it. It is symmetrical in the sense of how the Note 7 was last year. So if you've had a Note 7 in the past, it is symmetrical, the feeling feels really good in the hand. Not slippery, not an issue at all. Okay, we're gonna let it boot up um, in the box. We get a SIM card, not installed as mentioned, and this is a T-Mobile SIM card. We have a SIM removal tray, uh, sorry, a SIM removal tool that's pretty much set in, as well as some instruction manuals and stuff like that. Here we are. In the box, we have the, USB, the micro USB to USB Type-C converter. This is so that you can use it with any of your cables that are still you know, micro USB compatible. We have the uh, USB Type-A to USB Type-C OTG adapter. This is essentially if you want to connect a USB drive to it, also, this is what we're going to be using to transfer our data. Uh, we have the USB, the uh, Quick Charge 2.0, uh, what they call adaptive fast charging, still in the box, available, and we also get a few extra things. We have the uh, AKG tuned headphones that we got, same thing from the S8 Plus. Uh, not the best on the market, but definitely not the bad, uh, not the worst, and still definitely appreciated that you're getting this at this price point. Uh, the other thing we have is a USB Type A to micro to USB Type C cable for data connection, as well as charging from the brick since it doesn't actually have a cable connected. Uh, tip uh, replacement for the uh, Note for the S Pen, as well as uh, earpiece tips. Looking at both devices, it's pretty obvious that the the shape of the device is essentially intended to be a little bit different. The S8 Plus is really a S8 with a bigger size, where the Note 8 is intended to be more squared. Uh, the one thing we want to mention to you guys as far as specs, we do have some differences here. Uh, we are running the same processor, the 835 processor is powering them in the US, the Exynos processors will be in Europe. Uh, we are running 4 gigs of RAM to 6 gigs of RAM, that's also a difference here. The 64 gigs of internal storage is the same between the two. Dual sensors in the back, one sensor in the back, and also we still have one single firing speaker. And the main difference of course between the normal S8 and the non-S8 devices is going always to be the S Pen. Uh, the S Pen, very nice with the clicky sound. Uh, and of course, it's supposed to be even more accurate. You are really pretty much getting a S8 Plus with a few more tricks. And I'll show you guys what the main differences are. Now I'm gonna go through the setup. 
It's asking me for a SIM. I don't have a SIM card installed here. I'm gonna go through this process and skip through all the way to the home screen as this is pretty typical to most Samsung devices. So I went ahead and skipped through most of the setup. Again, this is the main home screen. The launcher that we're using here is the same one that we had on the S8. As far as the software comparison between the two, the S7 Plus still runs 8.1 uh, as far as the experience with Android 7.0. Where we have it on the Note 8 is experience is 8.5 with 7.1.1 as far as Android. And security patch update is August 1st as opposed to the July 1st that we have here. The launcher is very similar to what we had before. Swiping from the left gives you access to Bixby. This is kind of like the Bixby home. We can set that up at a later time. You can also initiate Bixby by just pushing the button on the left and it does the exact same thing except that this is Bixby voice. I'm going to cancel it right now. Um, launch swipe up, you get the access to the home screen or basically your app drawer. Uh, and this it being a T-Mobile variant will definitely mean that we will have some bloatware. So device unlock, T-Mobile home, TV, uh, T-Mobile TV and voicemail. These are just the only applications we have from T-Mobile. T-Mobile home essentially is just a, uh, an account managing app. You can try, let's see if we can, app info. You cannot disable the T-Mobile, uh, the My T-Mobile application. The TV home, I'm assuming you could. Uh, yeah, you can actually even uninstall it. So some applications are gonna be functional in the sense that you can actually uninstall them, but some you don't. Samsung Pay is pre-built and you do have some of the Google applications. So what you have is Gmail, Drive, Play Movies, Duo is installed by default, Photos is installed by default, and Google Play Music as well as the Play Store. YouTube as well, and I think that's mostly it. Let me see here, any other? I don't see any games, actually pretty much pretty lean here. Let's uh, let's actually check out the memory. I'll, I'll be interested to see how much available RAM we have. This is the first time I've actually seen it where Samsung by default, when you open a box and take the device out, has not consumed the m most of the memory by default. It's actually using only one, it says right there, System and Apps is using 1.7 gigs. Now, obviously when I install my other applications, it's gonna change. But out of the box, out of the six gigs of actual being gigs of available uh, RAM, we have 3.4 gigs available. From a storage point of view, we do have um, available space is 50.7 gigabytes. So out of the box, when you first turn it on, out of the 64 gigs, you're gonna be using 50.7 gigs. So about 50 gigs of what you're using. And then the 13.3 is used by the system. Uh, very nice, very simple. The battery is a slightly smaller battery. I did charge this up um, in the second that I was actually uh, booting it up for you guys. I wanna make sure that you guys get that. It's a little bit smaller than what we had last year as well as even smaller than what we have on the S8 Plus. Uh, not as disappointing from what I've seen. It actually should be pretty good. Uh, again, overall, we have Bixby. We have the ability of setting up the different options. The camera really is where I wanted to check out some of the new features that we got here. So let's say turn on, I'm gonna cancel this and I'm gonna lift the camera. Let's go ahead and see if we can take some pictures here. And uh, so we have live mode, uh, live focus, which gives us the ability of doing the focusing on and doing that bokeh. And it uses supposedly both sensors in the back to be able to generate that. And then here you notice we have the one time zoom, the two time zoom, and this is Essentially all it's doing, it's switching between the two back sensors. And uh, hopefully you guys could see that, but essentially the, the main difference between the two is one is two times optically zoomed and one is the standard uh, zoom. So you're looking at it essentially the, the same camera on the SA Plus, just in a slightly better position. Let's see what makes the Note line even special. And that's by removing the S Pen from the bottom. And that gives us access to the new menu here. So you'll notice right there, there are some functionalities. We have the ability of creating Note, all notes, smart select, uh, screen write, live message, which is uh, what a lot of people have been using. So we're going to say allow here. And uh, you'll notice that basically it's just, you says draw something and it'll draw it for you. So I can say TK and I'm going to say done. And it's going to process it for me. And then it's going to generate this little video for us. And it's that traceability and that nice little message the way it does it. I think that really what makes it nice. And then you can share this on your favorite social media account. And we're gonna click the little shortcuts. Again, we have Translate, uh, we have Bixby Vision, as well as Screen Write, and of course, Smart Select. Smart Select gives us the ability of basically selecting certain areas of our screen. So let's say I wanna basically just select this area and I can start working with it. I can pin the screen, I can auto, auto select if there's something in the, mid in the middle of it, and it'll basically shrink to that size. Um, other things that we have here is the ability of doing screen off memo. So I'm gonna put the S Pen back in. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna take off my pen. You notice the screen didn't turn on, but it does actually have that little option here. So now I can actually start writing and I can say, and it'll save this and then I can just say save to notes and it puts it in and it'll save it to my device. So the settings tab is pretty much simple. We've what we had before, connections, sound and uh, vibration, notification, display, wallpaper themes, 
advanced features for the S Pen. Uh, of course, this is uh, manage the S Pen features, smart stay, games. This is for the game center. Uh, one-handed mode if you want to turn it on and then finger sensor gesture and that's what I wanted to turn on for you guys and what this does for us is it gives us the ability of using a swipe down when you do this you don't have to overreach and try to get to the top as long as you can reach your fingerprint sensor in the back you're going to be able to get it multi-window of course is turned on by default you can go here grab the actual item that you want so press and hold move it to the top and then we can hit the other option and it turns on very very easy very simple split screen is in use. Uh, we still have access, and let's go ahead and hit skip, to the same edge panel that we normally have with the S8 Plus. The only difference here is that now we can actually click here when we have the S Pen out and we can scroll through and even add more shortcuts. But what I want to really, really try at this point is I want to see how this works with the Gear VR, the brand new 2017 one. The box is pretty simple, really. We're going to be getting the headset, the remote control, and the remote control is pairing via Bluetooth. And here we have it. This is the 2017 model. It's a little bit of a blue tint on this. Hopefully you guys could see that. Uh, you can actually open this up at this point and remove the visor. The visor doesn't stay on. It does have a clip built in for the uh, micro. This is for the USB type C. They do provide you with the micro USB connector. So if your device, if let's say you're using an older Samsung device, this will work for you. They also include a USB, a micro USB to USB type C converter here in this little package. So hopefully you guys could see that it's very nice. Uh, last but not least, we also have a lanyard for the remote, the remote right there, and it actually just works pretty nicely. Uh, it is connected via Bluetooth, so we need to pair that up. Uh, as far as the device and what I was really worried about, the S8 Plus, when I did try this, uh, when I first got this, uh, had a hard time going in and I felt like it was stretching the limit. And I was wrong. The uh, Note 8 will be stretching the limit. So you guys could see... It's telling us obviously that I need to set it up. I didn't want to go ahead and go through and give you guys a full review. I'll do that in a separate video, but from a sizing and from a fitting point of view, it fits perfectly. Let's see here. Yes. And um, I think this is pretty much the limit of it. I mean, you could see here right there, that's the, the, the edge of it. Uh, I can't go anymore. This does not flip anymore. And anything longer than 6.3 inches, which is what the Note 8 is, this headset will not work. Now, um, maybe I can also check it out from the 2017 model headset. So I went ahead and brought in, uh, this is the 2016 model of the headset. This one did not come with the remote control. So let's say you do have uh, an earlier version of the uh, USB connector. So I'm gonna put this one on the side. And I already have this mounted with my USB Type-C. I'm gonna go ahead and click home, not gonna install Oculus. And let's go ahead and mount it in. And so I'm gonna be honest, it, it touches it. It doesn't actually extend. It's not hard to put in. It does fit. You can see here, it actually is, a, basically this is truly stretching the limit of the 2016 model. So if you have that, this should work for you, but just remember that this is gonna be the extended version of it. It will not go anywhere. It does snap in, uh, but again, it's really just pushing the limit and taking it off. Uh, there is gonna be some, a little bit of rubbing here, but there is rubber here from the actual headset that protects it. So I wanted to snap real quick a few pictures for you guys. Um, we're gonna use the two times and one time. So this is the normal one. And we're gonna switch over to, okay. And uh, let's go ahead and switch over and do a quick video for you guys. So this is a quick demo of the front-facing camera on the brand new Note 8 T-Mobile Edition. Uh, again, just a quick sample for you guys just to show you how the camera is able to perform. Uh, now, out of the box, it is configured to go at 1080p. You can actually go up to Quad HD or 4K, essentially, in the front, front uh, on the front sensor. So that's really nice. Let's go ahead and see how the back sensor performs. Here is a quick sample of the back-facing sensor. I am using one of the sensors. I'm not going to be able to switch between the two since I can't actually see where that button is. But again, a quick sample of how this looks. How does it actually compare? And we do have OIS on the back sensor. So this image should be a lot more stabilized than what we had with the front facing camera. Uh, keep in mind that when you first take the Note 8 out of, your, out of the box and turn it on, the display actually isn't turned on to the highest resolution, which is the WQHD Plus, the 2960 by 1440. It's turned on to 2220 by 1080p. Now 2220 because this is an 18 by nine aspect ratio, but 1080p is where you are. So by default, you're not getting the full resolution. I still don't understand why Samsung doesn't turn it on and give us the ability to go downwards. So you can clock it down to 720p, you can clock, uh, go up to 4 uh, to a quad HD, but by default you set to full HD, which just mind boggles me. Again, for battery consumption, I think most of us were not going to have a problem with it. But when you buy a device that has a quad HD display, 
you want to have it at Quad HD's display out of the box. Don't change it to 1080p and tell me, and then not tell me that it's a 1080p. You have to actually find this in the settings. Last thing I want to do for you guys real quick is a sound test. Uh, of course, the speaker on this thing is definitely something we're going to be using for calls and in story and media. Since we still have a single firing speaker at the bottom, this is something that we're going to need to be able to kind of keep, uh, keep an eye out. So I'm going to go ahead and play a quick song for you guys. So the audio on this isn't bad, um, I'm not going to say it's the best audio, but again with YouTube right now, at least in the current version, you're still getting those little bars. Um, I notice here that my logo, the channel logo is sitting outside of the frame. So again, unless the player supports the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, you're not going to be getting the full screen. But Man, this is a very, very thin device. The device feels very nice in the hand. I think the ergonomics of it is a little different than what you have on the S8 and the S8 Plus. Um, it has a little bit more sharper edges. It's not sharp, but it's sharper than the rounded edges that we have on the S8 Plus. Um, I also like the fact that we have a little bit more RAM and actually more RAM available out of the box. As you guys noticed, we had over three gigs of available RAM. And you'll notice that in the performance on the day-to-day -day activity, the more RAM you have, the faster things will load, also, if you start installing your applications, those are going to take some RAM. So again, the more you have, the better you are. And I think six gigs is where it needs to be specifically for the Note line. Um, the 835 is pretty nice. The Quad HD 6.3 inch display is very good. We still have the iris scanner. We still have the front facing uh, Quad HD camera, uh, able to go, you know, 4K in the front facing. The dual sensors in the back, I think is a nice approach. I'm not sure if it's the right one, but I'll definitely be able to share that with you guys with the full review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, as far as the last comment with the Gear, uh, Gear VR, if you have the 2017 Gear VR, you're pretty much set. This device is intended to work with it. This actually stretches the limit of what this device can do with that. Uh, if you have the 2016 one, which is the new one with the Type-C connector that came out with the Note 7 last year but does not have the remote, uh, you're going to be able to use it, but be aware that you kind of need to nudge it a little bit in. It will fit and it does work and the system does get recognized and the actual Note 8 was asking me to install the software. Um, audio quality is pretty decent. You guys saw the video sample that I gave you guys. Pictures are snapping pretty good. I'm really happy. I'm very stoked. Um, next thing I'm going to do is obviously transfer all my data over to the Note 8 and start enjoying this. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to turn in my S8 Plus back to T-Mobile since I have Jump On Demand. But I am not sad in the least bit. I'm very happy, very excited. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. And I'll see you guys in the next video.